Welcome back to the Noah Presgrove case. We've got some more interesting developments and news coming on in when reflecting back on the key house party footage, which most of you will be familiar with. I actually played it at the beginning of one of my videos some days ago. It looks like an alleged transcript has come out about it regarding the interactions of Noah and some of the other party goers around him. And it's kind of interesting. And what I would say is, if what's been said from that transcript applies truthfully with 100% accuracy within that house party footage, there is definitely room for concern and possibly incriminating evidence. But that's on the basis it's 100% accurate. I myself will be doing an analysis at some point of the house party footage. I don't have all the equipment myself and resources, but I'll see what I can find to see if I agree with it. Today, we're gonna to look at the transcript. Now, on this page here, um, we're trying to look at the recent ones. There's a few other bits and bobs to look at along the way. I'm not gonna click on it because of copyright music. Even if I clicked on the video and then muted it, I'd be screwed, right? So we've got a few things there. BS tribute to Noah. BS is the initials of one of the guys that was at the party at the time who was supposedly slapping Noah. And I think there's a chance that BS is the one that was confronting him in which he appears within the transcript of what we're looking at today. But yeah, tribute video is done on TikTok. As you see there, created a tribute. Same was reposted by IR. So the person called IR, who reposted the video by BS, IR is the guy that was in the background in that house party footage holding that rifle as BS was face to face with Noah just in front as he was slapping him. Very interesting. My question before we go any further is, why are these friends doing tribute videos now? Why are they honouring and remembering Noah's name now. Did they not do it way back then? I think some actually didn't when you look at their profiles. No mention at all, which is odd. So they're only, well, either they're only doing it now or they're deciding to do it again. And if that being the case, why are they doing it now? You know, if they did it next September coming up to the anniversary, that would make sense. But we're still long off from then. I mean, what's it now, June or something? I mean, why June? It's a bit weird. Are these people suddenly doing tribute videos because they feel guilty? Or if they do it, they think they may gain sympathy or support from the general public who will see these individuals as caring people who are mourning the loss of their best friend or just friend. But why now? Is it only being done now because the case has intensified, heated up, more discussions than ever, more people sceptical and suspicious of all these that were at the party? I wonder. Let me know your thoughts. But they are on TikTok, so you might be able to find them yourself. We get to these two posts here right now, and it will make more sense. We'll click on the first one, then follow on with the second, where it says trouble in paradise, because there are some extended points that have been made, good ones, which were lacking from Facebook. I'd like to say first and foremost, welcome, because I'm sure by now people would have tagged along. Welcome to this live premiere. Share your thoughts and discussions in the live chat box on the right hand side of your screen. And anyone in general, if you want to elaborate on points or you do have questions, leave them in the comment section down below under this video. And I can respond back to them at a later point. Down below, you'll also find a pinned comment by me if you'd like to check those links out. If you want to support this channel in alternative ways, there are ways to do so. And if you simply want to catch up on my recent coverage of the case, there is a playlist available. And if you want to catch up on my earlier video, which was a very interesting development between the likes of Jack Newton and Carter Combs, an analysis there, be sure to catch up on that. Top right corner of the screen where you see the eye symbol, click on that, you'll find the playlist and you'll find my video which I uploaded earlier on today. Um, so enjoy that when you do have time. 
but right now we need to focus on the recent development and it's titled if true this is big it's under the speculation slash theories so it means to say it's not 100 percent for definite just yet in terms of how it's been posted on here but it appears to be a possible repost from facebook so if this is a secondary person reposting it, maybe they're not confident, but the one that posted it on Facebook is for definite. I'm gonna try and click on it now if it will allow me. I don't know if there is any kind of, what do you call it, caption. What's this? I found this in the comments of a post that was trashing this subreddit. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just give a bit of context behind that. So everybody watching right now. So welcome to anyone that's watching in the background who may come from the Reddit page, the community, and welcome to anyone else in general, even if you come from the Facebook page. In recent time though, on Facebook, not the more official Noah Presgrove's page, I think that's called Justice for Noah Presgrove, but then there is an alt group which is called Noah Presgrove's Army, right? You get the idea. And on Noah Presgrove's Army, what we've already looked at earlier today, there was a post not long ago where someone was saying how, oh yeah, I've been over to the Reddit page and it's terrible. It's so bad. Rabbit holes, BS, weird behavior, weird people. And when I saw that, I thought, what? I mean, being realistic, normally, normally, Reddit is an absolute cesspit of cancer. It's disgusting, full of degenerates, low attention span, egocentric, impetuous, bombastic, ignorant, arrogant individuals. But when it comes to true crime, and when it comes to such as the Noah Presgrove case, and when it comes to this specific Reddit page, subreddit, it's actually full of decent people. No trouble, no issues, right? Maybe someone else from Facebook was looking at the wrong page or maybe they were looking at an old post. But in terms of what I've seen from this Reddit page, it's been okay. When we're talking about the Facebook page though, you could argue and say that's a bit more drastic and extreme jumping to conclusions, being over-skeptical without enough proof, right? So, you know, you can give and take. I think the range of different pages out there are good and useful, and they can complement one another. But can the people? Not always. Gears grind. But it's a good thing it's on different platforms, right? Because if it was all on the same page like Facebook, yeah, too many people in one space, it's not good. It's not good. Just like Dylan Rounds and the YouTube community. Terrible. But in relation to where this came from, I found this in the comments of a post that was trashing this subgroup. Well, I don't know if I'd be able to refind it, right? Because it depends how many comments are on that page. But as a repost, let's see what's mentioned here. Will it let me click on it? Yes, it will. I will zoom in in case you find it difficult to read. I think that should do. Now, the name and the profile is blanked out. That's just because of Reddit's policy, rules and regulations. It will be uncensored on Facebook, in case you're wondering. But this individual says, it wouldn't let me tag you. This is it. T.L. Moore. Are you familiar with Adobe Audition? It's a program that can isolate and remove different sounds and voices, making audio recordings much clearer. I have an audio recording with three distinct conversations I cleaned up. This is all to do with the house party footage, which occurred on either the, the Saturday, the Sunday, early hours of Monday, September 2023. So it's very relevant. And this person's kind of edited the footage in terms of the audio, making it clearer and getting rid of unnecessary sound. I think I'm familiar with that type of stuff, but do I have the resources? No, not quite. But let's see what this person's found from it. 
So number one, the first conversation analysed and cleaned up. The participants in the conversation from the footage, I believe, Isaac and Noah. Note, Isaac's lips do move, but there's a beep added to censor a cuss word. Cuss means swear word, making it harder to see clearly with the beep. I removed the beep content of what Isaac said. I'm gonna beep kill you. If you wondered why I censored it when I said it, it's just because of YouTube, but you can clearly read on screen why it means. I'm going to effing kill you. To which Noah Presgrove replies, I'll just kick your ass. The argument between Noah and Brylan escalates with Isaac staring at Noah and rolling his eyes, then saying bitch to Noah. Now, if I had to interpret this conversation from a certain timestamp within the party footage, well, if there's a guy called Brylan, that makes me think Brylan is also known as BS. And it just so happened within the party footage, Noah was confronted by BS. And that's when you had that confrontation and Noah, I think, asking Brylan to slap him. You remember that? And then Brylan slapped Noah and then ran away for a little bit. Then in the background, you had, was it IV or IR? Well, it just so happens here, one of the persons is called Isaac. So that IV or that IR initialed person, what we've heard recently, must be called Isaac. So this footage, this conversation which has been analysed, must be to do with when they were outside under the that roofing of the building, the house, where Isaac is in the background with the firearm and then Noah and Brylan are having a bit of a argument. Right. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? Hmm. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, if I've got the wrong bit of footage, but that's what I'm interpreting here, right? So Isaac with the firearm in the background says, I'm going to effing kill you, to which Nero replies, I'll just kick your ass. I don't remember hearing that. I said, I might have to look back myself just to make sure it lines up. If for whatever reason it doesn't quite link to the situation I'm thinking of here, it must be somewhere else within the footage. But nevertheless, this person seems confident that they've been able to figure out what Isaac was saying to Noah. Isaac supposedly wanting to kill Noah. Now, when you think of it now, and you look back retrospectively, major, major red flag. The last time I remember he hearing someone said, I'm going to kill you, that was with the Dylan Rounds case, when you had James Brenner saying, or speaking out loud, when Dylan was still present, speaking out loud, saying, I'm going to kill Justin Rounds. Dylan heard Brenner threatened to kill his own father. So, although it didn't happen, death threat to be taken seriously. The only other potential threatening comment I've seen since and to do with the Noah Presgrove case was just recently by that homeowner, and I believe the female homeowner, the name Stevie, might be getting mixed up there, but the female homeowner saying to someone on Facebook in a response, you're next. What is it with all these different people with these threatening words and messages? Now, the only differences between the homeowner and this person on screen, Isaac, with the threatening comments is one was said before the death and disappearance of Noah. The other one was said afterwards, post-death. The post-death one was said by the homeowner. But as for Isaac here, that was said at the time of when Noah was still alive. And I said, when you look back retrospectively, yes, you can think and assume, oh, was that a clue? Was that dropping hints as to what Isaac was going to do to Noah next? But why exactly the motive? Kind of unknown. Yes. But at the time, or if you used to look at it now and nothing ever happened to Noah, you just randomly saw the footage online and you saw him say, I'm going to kill you, right? you probably not think that much of it because you'll see, right, maybe the drunk, supposedly the friends, probably just messing about. 
not meant in a serious way, just messing around and joking. I mean, people have joked before in life saying to someone who they know, I'm going to kill you or I'm going to slap you silly. They don't actually mean it. But there are times when, let's say in this situation, something bad has happened afterwards. When you look back at the previous conversations, you could link it to a more serious outcome and it could be seen as incriminating evidence. Whether it's a coincidence or not, Noah potentially murdered. And before that, on the same night, I believe, or the the night going on to the early hours of the morning on the day of the death, what what's the last thing you hear? A person saying, I'm going to kill you. And then what happens shortly afterwards? The person ends up dead. You can link one thing with another, right? And even if Isaac was supposedly you know, innocent, it's just poor timing of words and what it led to. So that's what needs to be acknowledged there. Let's move on. Oh, what do we have here? Stone got Noah rolling his eyes, then saying bitch, right. The next one, number two, second conversation. The participants involve Noah and Brylin, content. This involved a confrontation where Brylin pulled out a knife and reared back. What, like a horse? Noah then stood up and said, Stab me. I dare you. This back and forth included phrases like, Hit me. Repeated. Right, so this second conversation definitely sounds more like the footage where IV or IR was in the background with the rifle. So does that mean the first conversation was an earlier part of the party footage? I mean, the footage that I've seen, it was kind of like limited. It was like two minutes long or less. I mean, do people have longer footage of the party or something where the conversations can be seen? What I'll have to do is link this or more so compare the conversations here and the transcript with the actual footage itself and see if I can hear it myself and actually find the correct timestamp. But it sounds quite intense, doesn't it? There was a photo or a screenshot of Brylin supposedly holding a knife in front of Noah, lower down. Personally, um, I would have to look back at that footage because I wasn't paying attention the very first time when I saw the footage, right? But for Noah to ask to dare the other person to stab him and then to slap, hit me. I mean, they could be friends, they could be drunk, they could be messing, but sometimes in life you dare the wrong person, they might just well do what you say, right? If you say punch me, they might actually punch you. So it can backfire. I mean, it depends what mood the other person's in. Let me know what you think there of that conversation. Right, there appears to be one final conversation on the next page, as you see. We'll zoom on. There we go. Third conversation. Participants include Isaac and Avery Combs. Interesting. The contents follow. Avery Combs addresses Isaac nothing. In quotes, you guys have had issues all day long. Isaac replies, I know, that's why I'm even here. I'll just shoot him right now. Then Avery Combs says, I want you to take it off this property. I'd rather not know. Don't show me where it happens. We don't know anything when we see the cops. Just take it somewhere that Carter Combs and I don't see it. This conversation isn't something I'm very familiar with because, as said, the footage that I saw from the house party, it was very short in clips. I don't remember the conversations to this extent. So whilst there might be a transcript from conversations, where's the footage, where's the links to it? I said, I'll look back at the footage that I've got, but I don't know how it could match up because I don't remember it being this long, the conversations. It looked like small talk at the time. But if this really was true, it's like turning a blind eye, looking the other way. So it's like, right, you do what you need to do to Noah. You need to kill him. You need to dispose of him. But do it away from my property. Do it away from my house. I want nothing to do with it. I don't want blood on my hands. Go off elsewhere. 
and we don't want to see it because we don't want to be traumatised by it, but you have fun in killing Noah if that's really the case. This sounds very shocking and very incriminating as of evidence, but this is what someone has said from when they've analysed the footage and the audio. I believe they said they were going to do a follow-up to double-check and reach out to authorities regarding it. So maybe once it gets to that point, then we'll know for sure. But as I said, if this really is the case and the deal, it really does highlight who could really be responsible. Isaac, the main person, from what's been supposedly stated, I'm going to kill Noah. And then Avery Combs, and in a way Carter Combs, being responsible for letting it happen, knowing it was going to happen, supposedly, and not resisting, just being a bit selfish and saying, well, if you're going to do it, don't do it near me. I don't want blood on my shoes. I don't want blood on my porchway. Can you just move along, please? A bit rude in a way. And uh, almost like stabbing your friend in the back, right? I'd rather not know. Don't show me where it happens. We don't know anything when we see the cops. Just take it somewhere that I and Carter Combs don't see it. So you, like, turn a blind eye. So then if you are investigated or interrogated, you got nothing to hide in terms of the location because you wouldn't know. This is weird. This is really weird, isn't it? And then there, there we go, lower down. I've listened to this recording over 500 times in slow motion, fast motion, and I believe this is an accurate transcription. I've cleaned up the audio. I'm sending it to a third-party sound expert to verify the accuracy of what I just said. Right, maybe it was another comment elsewhere that, where they said about sending it into the police. Well, I mean, you can't get... Well, not excited, but you can't be overshocked by it just yet. I think, at least for me... My perspective, I would like to check it out for myself. So, yeah, with these screenshots, I think I'll just do that just now. It will allow me to look back afterwards if needed. There we go. There we go. How about the comment section? What does that consist of? See what people have had to say in recent time. Oh, fabulous hand. I will be using a voice separation AI module tonight on the audio from that video. Once that has been researched and in development for a while, if true, I should absolutely be able to get similar results. We'll see then. Okay. So it looks like this person is going to compare with what they have to see if it does link and if it is accurate. And to be honest, if they get the same result with their own analysis, then it kind of increases the reliability and the validity of it. So we'll see what happens there. Responses consist. Let's go. Would love to have someone corroborate this information. I also sent it to an acquaintance of mine who's a professional sound engineer. I'll see if he can or wants to check it out. So whilst they're talking about the video and the conversations that occurred, I'm assuming it's that two minute long party footage clips all pieced together. If not, if there is a longer video out there, anyone watching right now, can you let me know in the comment section? Whether you have the link or not, if you are aware that there is a longer video about the party, that could be of help, because what's being talked about here is quite interesting. Can't wait, post if you can. Be kind, this is tremendous evidence if this transcript is accurate. Edit. I don't think this is accurate. Oh, <laughs> that, was, that was a change of events. The transcript doesn't match the demeanour and it looks like Isaac is pointing to someone else. But still, you know, threatening language, you could say. Anyway, also, how do you live with yourself knowing you said this to someone who was found murdered hours later and a video of you threatening to kill the guy made headlines worldwide? Well, to be honest, people nowadays could be considered more psychopaths than ever before. How they react to stuff, how they're numbed to things, how they see it as the norm. Oh, someone jumped off a building. Oh, well, 
Oh, someone got hit by a car. I'll just get my phone out. That's what people are like nowadays because of social media and being able to document it and upload it. People are almost encouraged to do so. And if they do get engagement from it, from whatever means, it almost rewards them to do it. So that's how humans can become desensitized. Unhappy says, I agree. Avery Combs would have to be super cold hearted to know he means he will actually die and not just fight. This is crazy. But I believe it's Avery Combs who hasn't done a tribute video or a tribute photo to honour or to remember Noah Presgrove. Correct me if I'm wrong, but when I was looking at the Facebook profile, there's nothing mentioned about Noah Presgrove. So could you say Avery Combs could be cold-hearted? I don't know. If I be honest with you, and this is just my interpretation, I'm not saying that it's correct, but when I saw Avery Combs' face, just for me at least, just my opinion, my thoughts only, they look kind of cold. That's all I can say. Moving on. Oh, we got this person again. Joseph Scott Morgan, Body Bags Podcast. Right, so this is a different Joseph compared to the last Joseph we've heard of. Okay. So from Body Bags Podcast says, shared how Noah's depressed skull fracture was a lethal injury. He mentioned a few items which could have caused this. A baseball bat, like how I mentioned, some other items, whatever that is, and being pistol whipped if one was hit just right on the back of the head. Now, we've heard in the background, Maria likes pistol whipping left, right and centre. Good for her. But in terms of this situation, on a more serious basis, being pistol whipped basically means more so the handle of the pistol being used against your head or near to your neck on the jaw to knock you out. Now, you've seen it in films, movies, more so they do it with rifles and they use the stock of the rifle, the end of it. What do you call it? The rifle butt. That's another way of wording it. So it'll turn the rifle around and use the handle part, the stock, and bash it against someone as like a jab or like a slash in a way, a downward strike. In terms of a pistol though, you kind of like flip it around a little bit and then use the handle part and under the handle part to whack someone on the head and that would do the job. But to be honest, it's a bit weird, isn't it? Why would a person with possibly a fully loaded gun, instead of shooting Noah, oh, let me just put my pistol on safe mode only, then I'll just flip the gun around so it's kind of upside down and the barrel's pointing towards me, and then I'll decide to repeatedly club Noah to death on the head or more so on the back. Right? It just seems a bit silly, doesn't it? If you have a gun, the only reason why you would pistol whip somebody is when you're out of ammunition or you don't have any to begin with. If you have ammunition, it's a lot easier and it's much faster to fire the pistol than it is to get up close, rotate the gun around where it could be facing you, and if loaded, could be fatal towards yourself, to then use it against somebody by whacking them, right? And if there is impact with another person, and if the safe mode was off, I don't know, it could cause a misfire, could cause it to shoot yourself. It just seems a bit weird, doesn't it? And we've heard that Noah wasn't shot. All the damage, or most of the damage, blunt force, such as a baseball bat, poles, things like that, maybe a golf club. But as for being pistol whipped, well, that could be one way too, but I just can't imagine Noah being pistol whipped when he might as well have just been shot. That would have been more easier, more efficient, and you would have been at a distance and you wouldn't have got any blood on you, right? So I don't think it was a pistol. But I did hear some discussions elsewhere on Facebook where they were saying how if he was whacked to death or more so if it was with a rifle such as what supposedly Isaac had in that footage whilst holding that rifle, the stock of that rifle described as like a fish shape and the injury, one of the injuries sustained was like some kind of fish shape injury or something so you could link one with the other as a possibility. But once again, even with a rifle... If it's loaded, you know, why not 
use it, why not fire the rifle instead of just whacking someone? And you could say, well, maybe no ammunition was taken to the party. Well, then why are you taking your firearms to the party? Are people taking firearms to the party like they would with friends? Oh, I'll, I'll bring you along, hand in hand. They start dancing, doing ballroom dancing with their little rifles. No, they didn't. There must have been a reason for taking rifles in the first place. And if things did escalate, well, a rifle, a gun, is a good opportunity to use if you're in danger or if you want to take someone out. So, yeah, it provides new opportunities, but not good for the victim. Anyway, the person says, I'm not saying Isaac had anything to do with what happened to Noah, especially since Noah's family on the Full Load podcast on Sunday seemed to be fine with him. Still, I'm curious if the rifle has been examined. I know golf clubs have been missing as well. And why are they missing? And where are they? Were they dumped, disposed of? Could there be any DNA or evidence on them? I wonder. What else do we have? I'm not sure if the transcript is accurate. The demeanor in the video doesn't match the words. I thought this was about the kid wanting to shoot his gun and the girl telling him not here. Maybe that would make more sense because Isaac was speaking to a girl behind Noah. Now, what's this? No, this is not evidence that can be taken into the police as visible evidence. The FBI have far better equipment than the public uh, can ever get their hands on. And they will use their own equipment to analyse video and audio. Imagine taking a cotton swab into the police station and insisting that it contains DNA of a person who killed the black... Uh, Dahlia, whoever you say that, that you obtained after isolating it from a group of a DNA with your Adobe DNA home lab kit and you are turning it in as evidence and that is as hilarious as it would be if you took this audio into police and claiming you have people trash talking at a party. Maybe you can catch the killer admitting they killed Noah on a spirit box. <laughs> Maybe. And take that to the police as evidence. Mm, that wouldn't go well. His spirit would never lie. Plot twist, he was trampled by a herd of deer. It's okay to have theories and to discuss your ideas on that, but all of this extra stuff is pointless. The police have their own resources and did not ask the public to step in and come analyse audio for them. Everything is being fully investigated. Let the FBI do their job and see what they have to say once they're done. But let's say, for example, that audio from that footage, that video at the party, and there could be some kind of incriminating evidence within it. And if the police and the FBI are on to it or considering analysing it or in the process of doing it, uh, why now? 2024? You know, what about 2023? Like a year ago? Why was it, why was it not done then? Why is it only being done now? You'd think if it was done back then, and not much has happened since, maybe there wasn't much of interest within that footage to begin with, and that's why it's gone silent. But, you know, when people start looking back at material, they might start seeing things themselves, whether it's entirely true, or they're wording it, or listening in, as they want it to be a certain way, so they convince themselves, maybe. I'd have to look at the footage myself, though, right? Go back over it. I'm probably going to adjust the title of this video, though, because... Is a bit, um, what I would say though, maybe people on Facebook have got a bit too ahead of themselves, a bit too excited possibly. Some on Reddit are being a bit more grounded. So what's this? You should get the police to investigate who broke your enter key. <laughs> what? Okay. Storm says, in my opinion, it isn't accurate. I think Isaac is having several conversations at once. It's obvious to see he's wanting to go shoot his gun and Avery Combs is telling him she doesn't want him to. She's already bleeding, etc. What? She's already bleeding? Why? How? I don't remember seeing Avery with blood on her. I don't know what that's about. And it says, and everyone is parked all over. And she isn't sure where everyone is at. It doesn't even make sense for Avery and Isaac to stand there and casually talk about taking Noah out to shoot him later. I think Isaac is telling Brylin that at this rate I'm just going to effing kill you. There's like three different conversations going on that you grouped into one. Oh, I think Isaac is telling Brylin at this rate I'm going to shoot. So, to be honest, <laughs> even if Isaac wasn't directing it at Noah... 
by saying it to Brylin, it's still considered a death threat. Now, obviously, if you're a friend of that person, it won't be considered a death threat if, if you get on well. But to the outside, looking in, right, can interpret it different, right? If Brylin, besides Noah, ended up dead, then you could say there is something suspicious going on. I said, we'll have to see, you know, like eye contact. In which direction is Isaac looking in when he supposedly says about killing someone? Of course. But it's good that people are being grounded here. Realistic. Ratch. Ah. I don't know. Have I seen this person before on YouTube? Maybe not. Might just be a coincidence. Anyway. I agree. This is my reply to another comment. It looks to me like Isaac is pointing either over the two guys or at the other guy. As far as the interaction with Noah and the other guy. I don't hear stab me or anything like that. It looks like Noah just finished shotgunning a bear and then he throws it down behind him. I don't see a knife at all. If that guy had anything in his hand, it was something to shotgun that bear with. You can tell that's what he's about to do. By now, he's holding it. Also, I hear the other guy say, I trust you, I trust you. This, to me, looks like fun and games. Yeah, They're smiling the whole time. So if the enhanced audio really shows the posted conversation, I'd be surprised. Yeah. You'd think that, upon even watching the footage the first time round, if anything odd did happen and it was somewhat clear, you'd think it would catch your attention immediately, but it didn't with me, Sam. What else? That's exactly how I feel about this too. I have a hard time believing these kids are casually talking about a planned beating or murder out in the open, like it's no big deal. These are country kids, not the mafia. They would keep it quiet, Lom. They would keep it quiet. Well, this is the thing, what you've got to understand. Whilst they're at the party and they're hanging out in their own little private groups, maybe having a little private conversation in the background, are they aware that things are being recorded at the time? If they were, then yeah, okay, they'd probably be aware and they wouldn't say certain stuff. But if they, if they felt that there was no cameras on them, right, they might start talking in the background. To say that they would keep it quiet, lol, well, isn't that what's kind of happened or it be still where it still applies now, or more so in the past, where people at the party were kind of keeping quiet, the stories weren't that clear or in sync with one another, not that much cooperation, were people hiding stuff, level of silence on and off. Done that in that something of value? Anyway, what else? Buttercup. Wow, good work, or at least going through all that to get what you got. By chance, does anyone have the actual video handy to watch again? I think I know which one it is, but I only see the short version of the slap game. Okay, so there's a Daily Mail link there. Possibly, could that be the footage where I got it from in the first place? It might be. I'll have to head on over to that link later and see if it matches up with the video. So that's good. What else? In response... Ratch says, thanks. I don't know, though. It looks to me like Isaac is pointing either over the two guys or at the other guy. As far as the interaction with Noah and the other guy, I don't hear stab me or anything like that. It looks like Noah just finished shotgunning a bear, then he throws it down behind him. I think I remember that, yeah. I don't see a knife at all. If that guy had anything in his hand, it was something to shotgun that bear with. You can tell that's what he's about to do by how he's holding it. Also, I hear the other guy say, I trust you, I trust you. Oh, we saw that before. Has that been copied and pasted? Probably. I watched that video over so many times, and although I can't figure out what they're saying, in the end, I thought Isaac was just asking if he could shoot the gun way over the back. He's not pointing at anyone there. He's pointing up, which I guess means far away. I do not. There's been so much information coming and going. My head is still spinning from it all. If I find it, I'll certainly let you know. Okay. They did well if true. I listened to that video over 500 times and couldn't decipher anything solid from it. Oh, wow. I really couldn't either. But the thing is, as far as we know, Noah was not shot or knifed. True. I think no matter what the kid says, he would not shoot Noah. Noah has his back to the boy with a gun and seems comfortable. The gun is beside his side. If he was prepared to use it, he'd have his hands and arms prepared to raise fire. I mean, <laughs> I don't think that would even happen, though, or even that possibility of a shot being fired at the house party, because surely you'd hear the noise, people might scream, maybe. It would be a shock to some. It might even be the ballistics as well, if there was a bullet hole somewhere. Now, 
Hadley says, I'm so impressed by the work folks are doing. This really has become an army for justice. Thanks for sharing. But let's let's not get too ahead of ourselves because while someone might be trying to do good work out there, unknown to them, they might be creating accidental misinformation. That's why I've got to stay grounded for now. And last but not least, I'm hearing early morning flashbangs in someone's near future. Right, okay, is that just a hint? Now, you've seen that. You've seen, like, the transcript. I found it hard to believe myself just because of what was specifically said. Let's look at this last one. Get off. This to relationship seems as though Carter Combs and Jack Newton broke off the engagement and relationship, user's opinion. There's one of the profiles of Carter Combs, as you can see there. They do have multiple accounts, which is unusual. Supposedly, it was said on Facebook that Carter Combs, this account has unfriended Jack Newton as well, besides supposedly breaking up, and Jack Newton has done the same thing as well, mutually, but... On one of Carter Combs' alternative Facebook accounts, they're still friends in the background. So is there some kind of elaborate plan going on? Who knows? But you see the photo there, Carter Combs. Relationship, single, but before, they were engaged. And that happened in February. I said once again, Jack Newton, single, but previously in relationship. So what's going on there? Kind of odd. If we go to the comments, we've got some interesting points there because, to be honest, I'd say on Facebook, no one was really talking much about it. They were talking around it. Let's see what people from Reddit had to say about the recent news. I'm hoping this is a sign that the investigation is heating up. What? Because people can't trust one another within the case? Or those within the case feel like the walls are closing in, so they've got to distance themselves now? But you'd think... If people, if one another knows and they just happen to be together, then they split up, to, you know, part ways, and if it ends on a negative term, could one turn information in to the police to do with the other person, grass on them? Who knows? More comments here. Unhappy says, hopefully they will tell on each other, grass on each other, and say what actually happened, as if anything did. Broken, makes you wonder, doesn't it? Do they already have their guy behind bars? And the public don't know. But would the family be informed? Are they in the dark too? And if their guy was behind bars, what's that got to do with Jack and Carter breaking up? Are you saying that Jack is the one that's been behind bars? What are you suggesting? Lemon, do people still change their profiles on Facebook? Could they never have changed it to begin with? Big says, yes, both of their profile pictures were changed within the last 24 hours along with their relationship status on both of their pages from engaged to each other to single. They also no longer follow each other on Facebook. That's true, but on one of Carter Combs' alternative accounts, she still follows and is friends with Jack Newton. Okay. Broken says, someone's about to talk and clear their conscience if they haven't already. Let's hope that is true. Thanks for the update. I do not use Facebook, but I was able to see some pictures of RN. Who's RN? And there was a family picture from earlier this year with Carter Combs in it. I do not know if it still is up or not. The picture is gone as far as I can tell. Why do you block their names? I thought with the new rules we needed to do that. Oh, what's going on here? Um, okay, I read them this morning. Right, can I go back? See full discussion? I don't know why it did that. Kicks me off. That's why I've got to be careful on there. Right, key photos coming up shortly. No longer follow each other. They were listed as engaged earlier this week and they deleted photos of each other. Right. Okay. I mean, I've only looked on their account just recent, so maybe I've missed out on photos that were once there. But yeah, they're deleting photos, deleting one another, their memories. Kind of interesting, right? Is it a publicity stunt as a form of misdirection? Could they still be in the background? getting on well together, laughing at everyone online. That's what they're 
main consensus is on Facebook. It's very interesting this. It's kind of divided. Majority of people on Reddit believe that maybe it's influenced the breakup through the case and things heating up in the background. But those on Facebook are convinced that it's all an elaborate ploy. It's all fake. You know, a fake publicity stunt. Interesting. Moving on. It says, or could they be trying to throw people off by separating ties on social media? Here's Carter Carter Combs' old and new profile. Right, of the same thing. What's this? Edit. I made a comment about friend count. I was wrong, so I took that out. Right. Where's it going to send me over here? I don't know if you can see the photo or not. We'll just do it like that. It might be a bit hard to see, but basically this is of the same account, okay? On the left-hand side, old account originally. Left-hand side, it says engaged to Jack Newton, and that was earlier this week or the week just gone. On the right-hand side, what we've seen as of today in my earlier video, it now says single. So you can clearly see before and after. Old account, engaged to Jack Newton. Edited now to single. And when you look at the profile picture and the channel art as well in the background, on the left, Carter Combs and boyfriend Jack Newton. And in the channel art as well, background, Carter, hands around Jack Newton, close together because they're in a relationship. And now you look at their new account. Well, not new account, but Carter's updated account. No sign, no trace of Jack Newton at all all by herself. Distancing herself from Jack, I wonder why. So you can clearly see before and after, so that's, that's good that. I might use it as a thumbnail, I don't know, I'll see. So it says, several less friends, she has four more as of today. All right, whatever. Yeah, maybe they don't want an angry mob protesting at their wedding. Yes, if you didn't know, the wedding has been called off. Okay, I don't think that's going to load. Wow, looks like they bought themselves some dignity. If true, there must be a lot of tension. By the way, the two families. I hope they turn their back to each other's and justice will happen. They could be trying to throw people off, just consider that a possibility. I read this could be a strategy on their part to distract the public. Please know I have no idea what is true. Either way, it's distracting. It's good to know for sure, but I'm going to put it on the back burner and focus on the night in question, along with anything that led up to it. I'm assuming that would be from a defence attorney as well. Why distract if there's nothing to hide? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are we still on the post? We need to try and get out of it. There we go. I don't know if there's any more new information. If we go to the latest, two hours ago, 11 hours ago, right, so not much has come out since. We'll have to see what the updates follow next. Right, things may slow down, we'll just see, but I think we'll leave it there for now. If you want further clarity, you want some additional analysis from my point of view in terms of the breakup of Jack and Carter, supposedly, well, check my earlier video out top right corner screen, click on the eye symbol, you'll find it there. Hopefully you found this video interesting. Be sure to share it. And if you do want to be updated on future videos, it is advised to subscribe to the channel and turn on all notifications. So that's one way of being notified for the future when it comes to more videos, because I'm sure there will be more to come. I do have an idea of one, what I can look into tomorrow. And if anything else comes along the way, I'll consider that as well. So thanks for watching. Appreciate your patience. I'll see you next time. Goodbye for now.